Good evening and welcome everybody to Power for Today Prophetic Ministries with George Dello. And uh, we want to welcome everybody on Facebook Live as well as free conference call as we get into our Tuesday night Bible study tonight where we have been uh, looking at a series on Has Anyone Seen My Lord? Before we get into the Word tonight, we want to take a moment and have a, a word of prayer. And before that, I just want to share a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday, we usually have Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be having tomorrow night's uh, uh, meeting because I have a funeral uh, I have to take care of and also be going out of town uh, the rest of this week. So uh, just to remind you of that, we'll not be on, online tomorrow night for Wednesday night Bible study. Also, uh, we are wrapping up a fundraiser for uh, helping those in St. Vincent who have been suffering from uh, a volcano eruption that's taken place since uh, April 9th. Uh, a lot of devastation down there, a lot of damage. Uh, so much ash has poured out and uh, ruined uh, crops and homes and vehicles and uh, a lot of need down there right now. Uh, uh, tens of thousands of people have been uh, relocate, uh, uh, had to leave their homes, evacuate their homes because of the uh, volcano. Uh, they need food, they need water, they need shelter, they need clothing. Uh, we want to help do that. Uh, I work with a local uh, church and pastor that I personally uh, uh, know in, in St. Vincent, and so everything raised will go to them uh, to distribute to the immediate needs of the people down there. Uh, if you'd like to help us, there's about five days left on this uh, fundraiser, and you can uh, find it on uh, fun, uh, Facebook Live, or, or rather Facebook page, uh, St. Uh, Vincent uh, Volcano Fundraiser. And I appreciate everybody that's been helping and uh, looking forward to uh, help God's people in need. Let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you tonight as we come together to look into your word. We thank you, Father God, that uh, uh, you send forth your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all the truth, to break open the bread of the word and, and allow that word to get inside our hearts, Lord. We can be rooted in us and can bear the fruits of your kingdom as you are raising up a people for yourself, O oh God, these last days that are going to carry your glory to the nations. Father God, I just pray that you will just grip every single one of us, Lord, every child of God, man, woman, in the name of Jesus, and just work your truth into us. Bring us into that place of willingness and obedience. Bring us into that place, O oh God, that uh, you have the preeminence in our lives, Lord. We are a, a, a people after your own heart that live for you, Lord God. Everything about our life is about you. And Father God, as we see these things happening upon the earth, we realize that time is running out and there's a great job to do to bring in a harvest before the coming of Jesus Christ. I pray that you raise up labors for the harvest, that you move mightily all across the nations, Father God, to, to add daily to the church those that are being saved as you pour out your spirit upon all flesh. I pray, O oh God, that you would rain down upon your church and revive us. Make us alive again, O oh God. Make us a people, Lord God, that will do your will and bring forth your kingdom and uh, uh, again, bring forth your glory all across this earth until your glory covers the earth like the waters cover the sea. And I want to thank you, Father God, as you orchestrate all things tonight according to your will and purpose. Anoint the word to work effectually in us and be glorified in everything that's said and done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, again, just want to welcome everybody on uh, Facebook Live as well as Free Conference Call. This is George Della with Power for Today Prophetic Ministries. And uh, we are uh, doing a series on Has Anyone Seen My Lord? And uh, uh, this basically has to do with God bringing us to the place where we uh, reveal Him to those around us. We reveal Him upon this earth uh, through our, uh, the things that we do and also the way that we live. Now, last week we, we looked at how God's been raising up, God is moving in this earth to raise up an army. Uh, that's going to carry his glory forth in this last day. I believe that God is, is uh, uh, mobilizing and uh, motivating and working in uh, multitudes around, this, around the globe uh, 
uh, preparing a great army that's going to go forth with this gospel, that's going to reach souls for the kingdom of God uh, before the coming of Jesus Christ, is going to carry the glory of God from nation to nation. I, I believe God wants to, wants to bring a revival to his church like we've never seen. God wants to bring an awakening to the nations uh, that's going to bring in a great harvest like we've never seen because God is a husbandman and uh, uh, he's going to have a bride for Jesus Christ. It's going to be a holy bride. It's going to be a glorious church. It's going to pe- be a people of obedience uh, that are going to do his will and show forth his glory on this earth in signs, wonders, and miracles. And uh, 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 people are going to come to faith in Jesus Christ and God's going to have a great host in these last days. In uh, Psalm chapter 1, uh, uh, 110, the Bible prophesied that there would be a people that were willing in the day of God's power. And I want to tell you something. I believe we are moving more and more into the day of God's power. I'm talking about the greater glory of the latter house, that God is going to pour out his power upon this earth to reach souls and to do a mighty work to build his kingdom before the coming of Christ. And uh, he said he's going to have a people that are willing. Uh, and that's one of the keys to being a com- becoming a part of the army of God, to become a part of the... Uh, those uh, uh, sons and daughters of God are going to be play an essential part uh, in this last day move of the Holy Spirit. We need to begin by being a willing people. And, and the truth is, when we look at the modern day church, this is one of the things that's really lacking in, in that people aren't willing to uh, become the true disciples of Jesus Christ, whereby we surrender all, we deny ourselves, take up the cross to follow Jesus. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for the one who died for us. That we become a people that are about one thing, just like we see in the Bible. When you look at the New Testament church in the Bible, those people were sold out to Jesus Christ. You look at Peter and Paul and and, uh, Timothy and Silas, Barnabas, uh, Mark. You look through uh, the the, the book of Acts and see how they were sold out to do God's will no matter what it cost them, no matter what uh, they had to go through, didn't make a difference. Those people were sold out to God and they lived and died for him. God's looking for a people uh, that truly understand this gospel of Jesus Christ, that we're not our own. We've been bought with a price and and God has called us uh, to glorify him in our bodies and our spirits. We belong to him. We live for him. And uh, if necessary, we die for him. Now, God had to bring me through a process and, and I believe all of us go through uh, remember what Bob Paul talk, tells about in, in Philippians that he who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion even to the day of Christ Jesus. God is continually working in us uh, to, to bring us into the place where we become uh, fit for the master's use, where we become vessels that God can use mightily uh, to bring about his will and purpose. And so it is with me in my own life. I, I came to the Lord on March 16th, 1978. Uh, amazingly, uh, the day I came to the Lord is actually my, uh, my birthday as well, March 16th, not 78, a little, little before then. <laughs> Amen. But I came to the Lord on my birthday, and uh, not long after I came to the Lord, God began to, to speak to me uh, about a calling upon my life. God began to, uh, 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 it seems like wherever I went, uh, people were coming around and, and uh, giving me words of prophecy, uh, speaking into my life. And it was always the same thing, the same thing. And uh, that God had a calling upon my life. There was, he had a special calling of ministry for my life. And, 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 and as he began to deal with me about that, he began to deal with me about this deeper walk uh, with him, getting my life in order and drawing closer to him. And, 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 and words of prophecy would come forth that I would be a preacher of the word with, with signs following. In fact, when, when, uh, when I finally yielded to God and, and uh, uh, said yes to the Lord, to his will and purpose after God did a work in my life, uh, that's one of the things that I, 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 I challenged God on. I says, you know, we don't need another ministry. We don't need another church. We had, uh, we had a church on every corner. We had ministries all over the place. Back in, this is back in the 70s, early 80s. I, I mean, things are going pretty good as far as uh, uh, churches. And, and so I told the Lord, I don't want to be just another ministry or just have another church. Lord, if, if you're calling me into this, 
I want it to be something that's going to make a difference, that's going to impact lives, that's going to, that, that's going to affect lives for the kingdom of God, that's going to uh, bring, bring forth good fruits that you're going to be pleased with. It'll be a ministry of power, uh, a ministry of the word and the spirit uh, that's going to radically change people's lives and, 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 and through me to, 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 to raise up a people to this very end. And uh, uh, even though I recognize that God was calling me uh, at first, you know, I, I, I ignored him in the sense that, you know, I, I get these words, I, I, you know, I'd say, well, that's nice, but, you know, I kind of put it on the shelf. Uh, after all, I mean, I had a family to take care of. I was busy making a living, gathering the good things of life. And I mean, I was, I was a good Christian. I mean, I, I, I tithed, I attended church regularly. I prayed, I, I read the word, I witnessed, I, I even did some community evangelizing, but I wasn't in the perfect will of God because I wasn't sold out to the Lord. I was ineffective for his kingdom. The, 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 the world had a, a greater grip on me than he did. Let's be honest. I still ruled in my life. I, I was the one making all the decisions and, and more or less doing what I wanted to do. In other words, you know, uh, it wasn't so much me seeking God and what is what do you want me to do? It was me deciding what I wanted to do, what I liked, what I wanted to go, what, you know, what I wanted to be about. But, but it got to the place where the Lord finally got my attention when my attitudes brought a separation between me and God. I, I mean, I was still reading the word. I was still praying. I was still doing all the right things. I was going to church. But suddenly everything became dry. If you know, if you've been in this place the, called the wilderness, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, it's, it's suddenly like that, 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 that presence has lifted, the, that life that you were living in, that, that communion and fellowship is suddenly lifted. And, and, and you just don't sense the Lord's presence like it was. The, the, the word becomes lifeless. I mean, things began happening uh, in my home life and, and uh, things being disrupted. And I just, I just couldn't seem to make contact in prayer. I just had no sense that, that God was hearing me. It's like the, the heavens became brass. And, and I, I realized something was drastically wrong. But I had pushed this call of the Lord so far back in my mind that it was like I just wasn't hearing his voice anymore. You know, you can get to a place when you resist God that you get to a point where your conscience becomes seared. And I believe that's what was happening with me. His dealings no longer seemed to exist. And so this began to bother me, and I began to cry out to the Lord for deliverance. But the problem was I was being blinded by my own rebellion, by my refusal to submit to, to what God uh, had for his will and purpose in my life. And, and I became more and more frustrated in my walk with God. And w w when God has revealed something to us, you want to know something? He will keep us in one place until we act on that revelation. If God reveals sin, you cannot move on until you deal with it. That's part of God's transformation process because ultimately, remember, everything God is doing is to bring us into the image of Christ so that we can reveal him on this earth in a way that others will see and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son, and living God. And until you pass one grade, you don't graduate to the next. It's not, God doesn't work like our public schools work today, whereby we give everybody a free pass. God doesn't work that way. If you're going to move on with God, you got to complete the stage that God has you in. You need to deal with the things that God is dealing with, and you need to come to that place of allowing God to bring that transformation into your life so that you can move on to the next stage. And that's what basically what happened to me. I wanted to go on to the next, next grade when I had not finished the work in the one I was in. And so God put up this big wall of dryness until I was done. Well, in January 1985, the church I was attending held a men's retreat out in uh, Lake Gasset in North Carolina. Now, in the condition I was in, I mean, I was struggling. I was, I was dry. I was frustrated. I was getting uh, uh, very uh, uh, distant and, and, and upset. I mean, I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't see uh, clearly. Uh, and, 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 and when they came up with this meeting, I I kind of knew in my heart I should go, 
but my flesh was resisting. I, I was kind of like, you know, what's the point? Why, why should I go all the way down there? And, and, and I, I can't hear from God. I'm, I, I just, something's broken. Something's not right. But finally, I, I came to a place and, and, and I just, I just kind of said, God, I'll go on this retreat if you promise to meet me there and show me how to get my deliverance. Show me what's going on and get me out of this place, out of this wilderness, out of this dryness. You know, when we're in rebellion, we tend to be really arrogant with God. Have you ever done that? And after praying this way, I felt this peace in my heart as if God had answered me. I just had a sense that God heard my prayer. Now, this retreat was scheduled to begin on a Friday night with a meeting, and and our plan was that uh, we were going to meet, get together down at this lake, and and uh, uh, we would we would have a, uh, a begin on Friday night with a meeting, then get together early morning Saturday, have a meeting, and uh, uh, Saturday night we'd have a meeting, then early Sunday morning we'd have a final meeting before we'd head back to to Richmond in time for our. Uh, our, our own regular Sunday service in our church. Well, guess what? You, you, you know, every time you start uh, moving towards God, the enemy's going to cop up and try to get you off track, trying to move you out of the place. Well, that's what began happening. Friday, uh, Friday, everything began going wrong. I, I had to work late, problems at home developed, my attitude soured, the enemy was having a heyday, but praise God, I had determined in my heart I was going to go to this tree to meet with the Lord. So I just, I just threw up my hands and headed on. And uh, I, I actually I arrived late for the first meeting. And by the time I got there, I was so frustrated. The day had just drained me. And I just sat through that meeting, absorbed in this self-pity from everything that went on that day, and I don't think I really heard a word the speaker said. I was just so wrapped in myself. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had that kind of a pity party where you, you, you could be right in the middle of a whole bunch of people and not even know what's going on, not even uh, uh, being able to connect? Well, by the next morning, I was somewhat refreshed and ready to listen. And, and, and we, as we came together for that meeting, I sat listening to the guest speaker. It was like the Holy Spirit just began to speak to my heart. And, and, and as he did, God began to bear my soul before me. God began to, to open up the eyes of my understanding to see what was going on in my own life. And I realized the problem was I had never given my life totally to the Lord. He, he wasn't really my Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't obeying him. I wasn't, I wasn't following him the way I ought. I wasn't doing what God wanted me to do. I was doing what I wanted to do. And, and as the, the Lord began to, to open the eyes of my understanding, I became to, uh, to a place where I began to break and I felt ashamed at how I had failed God. I, I felt like my whole life was a reproach to God because I was making all my own decisions. I decided where I was going, what I was going to do. I decided what changes I would allow in my life, what habits that I would refuse to change. Well, when that meeting ended, I was so broken. I was so moved by the Holy Spirit, so convicted. I was so ashamed of, the, of what God revealed to me. I just could not wait to get away by myself. Now, listen, th there were about 30 men there in that summer house. So I ended up having to go into one of the bathrooms. And, 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 and when I got in that place, it's like something just broke inside of me. And I just began to weep like a baby. And, 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 and when I came out, uh, everybody was, was talking about going out for lunch and fellowship for the afternoon and then coming back for the evening meetings. And uh, I, was, I was so under the, under the, the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit I, I just couldn't go. I, I just made up some excuse. I, I went to my pastor. I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't go. I'm just going to stay here. Uh, I, I just need to stay here by myself. So, so they all left. And as I got alone with the Lord, the, it's like the presence of God literally flooded that room and began just to permeate my being. And God began to expose my whole life before me in the light of his will and purpose. And let me tell you something, how far I felt short. And, and, and as I began to humble myself before God and began to repent in tears, 
God just began to cleanse me and refresh me. He began to peel me like an onion layer by layer and, and just uh, moving for, for several hours. God just moved from one area of my life to another, exposing and cleansing, washing. And he revealed his desire to have lordship in my life so that he could use me as never before. Now, I had never known or experienced the presence of the Lord in such a real way. I mean, this was, this was a first for me. I mean, the experiential reality of God in that, in that moment was so unreal. There was no doubt I was hearing from God. There was no doubt what he was doing. There was no doubt what was going on. And as God began to, 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 to just wash me and cleanse me and, and, and get all of this stuff out of me and bring me to the very end of myself, bring me to that place where I finally just said, God, I give up. Be Lord of my life. Well, eventually the other men began to return and uh, we got together to have our evening meeting. As the evening closed, as the, the uh, uh, guest speaker was beginning to close out his, his, uh, his sermon, the Holy Spirit just began to prompt me to share with those men what had happened that afternoon. Now, let me tell you something. Not wanting to expose myself and my problems before here's my peers. You know, these are all men from my church. My first impulse was to reject those promptings, but they only became stronger and stronger until I could no longer restrain myself. So I shared the events of that afternoon and when I was finished, the speaker came over to pray for me. And as he was praying, I was sitting in a chair and everybody, the, the, the speaker brought everybody around me to, to, to pray over me and lay hands on me. And, and, and as, as he did this, uh, my pastor came with a bowl of water and began to wash my feet. And as he did this, I felt as if God were taking this huge washcloth and just cleansing my whole being from the inside out. I mean, I felt so clean and refreshed like a newborn babe. For the first time in my walk with the Lord, I made a true commitment to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I gave him total reign in my life. I had finally come to a place of absolute surrender to God's will and his way. And as, as, as I shared these things and, and, and God just, uh, just did this, this work in me, it's like the Holy Spirit began to move in that place. And one after another, nearly every man in the house began to repent and weep before the Lord. God began to bring restoration and reconciliation in that house. You see, all the problems we think only we have to deal with were suddenly coming forth from all these others. Don't you know we all go through the same stuff? Don't you know we all deal with the same things? And for hours, the Lord just ministered inner transformation. Let me tell you something. From that day on, my life was never the same. When the Lord took the reins of my life, my attitudes became changed, began changing right before my eyes because I was willing, because I finally yielded everything to him. God cleansed me and changed my heart. When I said yes, he came in and he did his work. Now, not long after that experience, in 1985, I received a clear call to the ministry. And at, by, by that time, God had got me to a place. When he called, I answered. When, when God told me what he was calling me to, I said, yes, sir. There was no question. There was no, no, no uh, rebellion. There was no questioning. It was just, yes, sir. And ever since then, I have watched miracles of God operating uh, through me uh, in ministry as I uh, went forth to take this gospel to this generation. You see, his call was always there. I just had to be willing to make him Lord. And, 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 and I believe that this is one of the keys right here to what God is trying to do in this hour that we're living in. God, like I said, is trying to raise up an army that's going to carry his glory to the nations to bring in a harvest of souls like we've never seen in order to prepare a people for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ but it begins right here. Each one of us must come into this divine encounter with God in such a way that it brings us to that place of absolute surrender where we 
uh, answer the call of God to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, to deny ourselves, to take up the cross, to follow Jesus wherever he leads us, to no longer live for ourselves, but to live for God and him alone. In Romans chapter 14, verse 7 and 8, Paul said this, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we, whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. That right there sums up the purpose of the gospel. That right there sums up what true salvation is. It is God bringing us to the place that we no longer live for ourselves. We live for God. We, we, our life is about Him. Our, our focus is about Him. Our love is for Him. Our desire, our will, our purpose, everything about us, everything in our life is surrendered and given over to God, and we live unto the Lord. Even if we must die, we die unto the Lord. We are the Lord's. We come to that revelation. We belong to God and Him alone. And that's why we exist. We live and exist to glorify God in our bodies and our spirits. You see, when we're truly born again, we are brought into a covenant with the Lord. And and, and coming into that covenant means that we give up our rights because we're bought with a price, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. We are literally bought by God with the blood of Jesus Christ. True repentance is us giving him lordship over everything, over our desires, our plans, our possessions, over our very life itself. Regardless of what we do now, we are the Lord's. We are his bond servants. You you, you see, many people have gladly accepted the promise of salvation, but have never relinquished the throne of their lives to God. If you want God to fulfill the part of his covenant that includes all of the blessings of life and and peace, then we need to fulfill our part by by allowing God to reign in our life. In fact, in in the book of Malachi, in chapter 2, he gives us a very simple sentence in that uh, uh, Malachi 2, which basically lays out in a very simple sentence what covenant relationship with God is uh, as Christians. And it's simply this. God says, I will give you life and peace. And on your part, you will fear me. That's it. That's the covenant that God has called us to. And the reality is so many uh, people in the church today don't understand this and are not living uh, in this covenant relationship. And therefore, We are falling short, and this is why God is having to do a work in the earth today to bring revival to to the church so that he can raise up a a army, an army of soldiers that are going to to fulfill God's will and purpose in this earth before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The alarm is sounding. The soldiers are being called. The only question is, Who is willing to submit to the commander, to Jesus Christ? Who will march while it is yet light? In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, he says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. In other words, God is looking for people. God is looking for somebody whose heart is fully committed to him, who says, God, Here I am, send me. God is looking for true sons and daughters of God that will allow him to have his way with them, to be led by his spirit, and to obey him no matter what he calls us to do. But God begins to look for those who are willing to forsake the things of this world and to seek him as never before. God seeks a people that will consecrate themselves to his service, that will enter into his presence and obey his commands for this hour. Notice what the psalmist tells us in Psalm chapter 24, verse 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who's really willing to go up to the mountain of the Lord? 
with fasting, with prayer, to hear his voice in this hour, to completely surrender to his will and become the Lord's servant. Who's willing to humble themselves that he might that you might walk in his presence and carry his glory, even as Moses did when he descended from the mount, from Mount Sinai and the glory of the Lord was risen upon him. He came down from the mountain and they couldn't even look at his face because of the glory that was upon him. God wants to raise up a people that will carry a greater glory to the nations of this world, that will, that will carry the glory of God all across the nations so that the glory of the Lord begin to fill this earth like the waters cover the sea. In Isaiah chapter 15, verse, uh, 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 Isaiah 57, verse 15, he says, For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is what God was talking about. Who can enter into the hill of the Lord? Who can go up into the mountain of God? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has humbled himself and surrendered himself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God's calling a people that are willing in the day of his power. God is calling a people that are willing to humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, willing to humble themselves before God so he can revive us and he can work in us in such a way that he can raise us up as mighty vessels of his glory to carry to the nations. You see, we need to be like Paul. We need to be crucified with Christ. So it is no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. Such a commitment is costly. Are you willing to pay the price? There is a price to truly follow Jesus. Jesus laid down his life that we might live. And he calls us to to lay down our lives that he might live through us. Even as Christ gave up his will for a higher purpose, we are called to give up our own wills and desires to follow the purpose of God, to fulfill what God has called us to. We've got a lot to learn about discipleship and following Christ. Jesus tells us in, in Luke 17, 10, he says, So likewise ye, when ye have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty to do. <laughs> How many in the church today are really doing the things that God has commanded us to do? How many in the church are really doing the commandments of Christ to go and make disciples, to be a house of prayer, to be a house of worship, to go and reach the, 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 every creature upon this earth, to go and share this gospel and to follow Jesus wherever he leads us, to obey him, to walk a life of holiness and righteousness. Jesus says, until we begin just to do the basics until we really begin to walk and follow Jesus, obeying him in all things. We're, we're, we're just unprofitable servants. We're just doing what our duty is to do. We, we, we're just doing the least. In Mark chapter 8, verse 34 and 35, look what Jesus says. Whoever will come after me, if anybody wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall will save his life shall lose it. In other words, if we want to continue to live for ourselves, if we just want to do our own thing, live for ourselves, live for our own will, our own purpose, we just want to have a good life, we just want to do what we want to do, you will lose your life. But Jesus says, whosoever shall lose his life for his sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. In other words, if we truly want to save our lives, if we truly want to live a life that's going to bring us into this eternal life that God has called us to, then we've got to come to that place that should have been worked in us when when Christ redeemed us, that place that we give up our life and we give all for Jesus Christ and this gospel to do his will. You see, it's a paradox for the kingdom of God. Through death, we find life. It is only as we fully die to ourselves and sin that God can resurrect the life of Christ in us. Jesus is our example. He emptied himself. He gave up all self-will to be totally submitted to the Father. And through his death, life was brought forth. He was the first fruit, and we are called to follow in the steps of Christ. 
Look what Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a quart of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. We cannot claim to live in him unless we also walk as he walked. 1 John 2, 6. Are you so totally dead to self that you can rejoice in the sufferings of Christ even as he did for our sakes? Are you willing to pay the price to go the way of the cross and follow Jesus Christ wherever he may lead you, whatever he asks you to do, that you will submit and humble yourself and follow him to obey him and do his will? I mean, read the book of Acts and look what it meant to deny themselves, to take up the cross. Too often, We like to be exalted. We want to be some great evangelist, some great apostle or prophet. We want to demonstrate all the gifts of the Spirit. But the reality is, too many are unwilling to have the character of Christ formed in us. We want to work signs and wonders. We want to see healings and miracles, but we don't want to accept the responsibility and the persecution that comes with that office. Paul Paul bore the marks of Christ in his body. He gives us a real glimpse of what true discipleship and cross-bearing is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 through 13, look what Paul says. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. We are naked and buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. How many in the church today are willing to put themselves into into the shoes of Paul, willing to put themselves into that passage right there of Scripture and live a life of of self-denial, living a life that is pleasing to God, no matter what it costs, no matter what it's going to take to fulfill His will and purpose. You see, those willing to walk as Jesus walk become fools for Christ willing to consider their present sufferings insignificant compared to the glory that were revealed in them, willing to forego the pleasures of this present hour so that others will be saved from eternal damnation. You see, the body of Christ is yet to recognize the richness of Christ's calling. We have yet to see what God can do with one man completely surrendered to him. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 26, he says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You see, unlike Moses, Much of the church today would rather enjoy the pleasures of sin than to suffer the reproach of this world. And we're living in a day like that as never before. How many Christians are falling to the wayside, getting caught up in the sin of this culture around us, rather than choosing to suffer for Jesus Christ's sake, rather than choosing to hold fast to the truth and be persecuted for it. We would rather join in the evils of those around us than be singled out as different. You see, when you get desperate, we allow Jesus to take us out of Egypt. But the problem is, too many refuse to to let Jesus take Egypt out of us. There are many Christians today that, 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 that are ashamed, they're embarrassed to be called Christian in public, especially around unbelieving friends or co-workers or even family. Are you ready to stand up? Will you choose the name of Christ, even if it means degradation and rejection, humility and brokenness? Will you choose Christ over your closest friends and relatives, even your own family? Look what Jesus said in Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. 
Now, Jesus is not talking about literally hating our friends and family. He's talking about living a life where he is our first love, where we put him, he has the preeminence in our life. We give him first place in all things. You see, we have not seen the depths of true persecution in this country. It's starting. It's going to get worse. But I believe it is going to, it's going to happen very fast, very quickly. Here's the happen. And as it does, are you going to be a disciple if it means suffering or even in death? Listen, consider these Christians of Cambodia. When the communists overran a small Christian school in the jungles of Cambodia, they forced all the students and teachers out into a courtyard behind the building. And then they placed this cross behind the gate leading out into the jungle and lined up the students and teachers. They told them this. They had a chance to be free. If they would go up and trample upon that cross and deny their faith, they could go through the gate to freedom. If not, they would be shot. Well, the first person goes forward, tramples on the cross, denies his faith, and goes running off into the jungle. Then the second person goes up and likewise jumps on that cross, runs off into the jungle. Then the third, then the fourth. And the soldiers just stand there and laugh and jeer at them. But then a young Cambodian girl came forward. And she reached that cross. She knelt before it and she kissed that thing. And looking up at the soldiers, she said quietly, I could never trample on my precious Lord and Savior. And immediately these angry soldiers shot her in the back of the head and she fell over dead. But you know what? To the consternation of those soldiers, the next person went forward and kissed the cross and, 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 and the next person and the next person and the next person. Everyone after that girl went forward to reverence the Lord and die because of faith in Jesus Christ. One child's faith sparked revival in the midst of a death camp. If you are a Christian, we are living in a culture of persecution and death today. Society laughs and jeers at our faith. What will you do? The price you have to pay now is so much less than her price. Will you choose Christ in this hour? Will you day, lay down your life that you might live? God is looking for a people that are willing in the day of his power. God is looking to raise up an army that's going to do his will and bring a great, uh, a, a great revival and a great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God before the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I saw this film online. It's called The Insanity of God. If you can watch it for free, I encourage you to look it up. This film is a documentary about suffering Christians. Christians are being persecuted and suffering for their faith in all these other countries. Let me tell you something. You watch that video because it will change your life. It will change your understanding of the gospel. It will change your understanding of the calling of Jesus Christ. It will affect you in the depths of your soul. And the bottom line is this. No matter what we go through in this nation, in this world, in this life, no matter what we have to face, no matter what comes down upon this earth it, that, that, that comes against our, our faith, persecution, even death, no matter what we go through, there's only one question you have to ask. Is Jesus worth it? Is Jesus worth it? Is he worth what they went through in the first century? Is he worth it what those, those uh, disciples went through, every single one of them uh, in the book of Acts? Is he worth it the, what, what, what Christians are going through right now in Africa, in North Korea, in China, in the Middle East? It, is Jesus worth it? That's the question we need to ask ourselves, because if he's not worth it, then we're not getting anywhere. We're not going anywhere uh, because uh, uh, we, we, we're missing a revelation of who Jesus is and what he has done uh, in and for your life. God is looking for a people that are willing to, to be and to do whatever God has called us to, because Jesus Christ is worth the price of whatever it takes to do his will. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. I thank you for this salvation. I thank you for Jesus Christ and what he has done for us to buy our lives with his own blood.
But Father, I also recognize that too many in the church today, in fact, more so, uh, uh, more, more, uh, many more uh, are in a, in a bad condition than are in a good condition when it comes to true discipleship, when it comes to, to what true Christianity is all about. Too many today are not willing to pay the price. Too many today are refusing to give up their their own lives, to give up their their own desires, their own will and purpose, their comforts and entertainments and, and sin. They're not willing to pay the price. They're not willing to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, to deny themselves and take up the cross and follow him. God, I pray, time is running short. You even said in your word that you would, you, 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 that, that we needed to pray for labors for the harvest because so many would not be willing to go. I pray, Father God, that you would pour out your spirit as never before upon your church, that you would open the heavenlies and rain down upon your church such an outpouring of your spirit, Lord God, to bring revival, to bring restoration, to restore a glorious church and a holy bride, to raise up a, the true sons and daughters of God, that will, that will take up the cross and follow you, that will be led by your spirit, that will go into the fields of harvest, that will do and go wherever you say to do or go, that you will have a people willing to save your power out of the womb of the morning, holy race, bring it forth like the dew upon this earth. God, I pray that you will move upon the hearts and minds of people all across the nations, that you will shake your church like it's never been shaken before, and that you will bring to light the full gospel of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did to bring us into that place where we are washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God to become those willing soldiers, to become a people that no longer live for ourselves, but that live for the one who died for us. Raise up your glorious church. Bring forth your holy bride. Raise up your people, O God, in this hour while it is yet day, before the night comes when it's too late. God, raise up your church now while there's still hope for our nation to turn back this tide of evil as your people rise up as a voice from heaven to speak against this wickedness and take a stand against this darkness. And I pray it in Jesus' name that, Lord, there will be a great and mighty harvest of souls, that you would bring a, a great awakening across all the nations of this world and bring in such a harvest as we've never seen in all of creation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, uh, a reminder again, tomorrow night, Wednesday, we will not be having our service tomorrow night. I have a funeral tomorrow, and then I'm going to be out of town for a few days. Uh, so I'll be, not, be back on Sunday morning. You can catch us uh, our Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. Eastern time uh, on Facebook Live as well as free conference call. And then I'll be back next Tuesday and Wednesday next week. So please remember that. Also, please remember and help us with our uh, fundraiser for the volcano victims in St. Vincent. I uh, got about five days left. It's on Facebook, St. Vincent Volcano Fundraiser on my Facebook page. Uh, let's help our brothers and sisters in Christ. There's such a great need down there uh, from the eruption of this volcano. It's still uh, spewing out uh, ash and fumes, and they really need our help. Let's stand together for the body of Christ. Amen. Uh, appreciate all of you. I thank you for being with me on Facebook Live, free conference call. I pray that God is speaking to you. I pray that God will do in you what he did in me, that God will bring you to a divine encounter that's going to transform your life and make you uh, fit and meet for the master's youth, that God can use you in great and supernatural ways to bring about his kingdom and purpose. Amen. I really love you and appreciate you. Uh, I, I just want to encourage you. Keep looking up. Get in the word. Get in prayer. Give yourself to God. Share this video. Tell others they need to hear the word of God and, and uh, come into the fullness uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep looking up because your redemption draws nigh. I appreciate you and thank you. Uh, have a wonderful week. Keep, uh, keep pressing into Jesus and uh, let's, let's get serious. Let's be the people that God's called us to be in Jesus' name. See you next time. Amen.